Our Lord Jesus, he proclaimed in his time, he said, this generation is an evil generation. Now, I believe that the generation we're living in now is also an evil generation. But I could be wrong. I hope I'm wrong. I mean, I'm not the Son of God. We know that Jesus wasn't wrong. Jesus knew what he was talking about. And he warned the people of their need to, to, to repent. Our Lord Jesus came in calling people to repentance. I'm going to give you three reasons why I think this generation is an evil generation. The first reason is we don't go to church anymore. The percentage of Christians who go to church is very low. What does this say? You know, going to church on Sunday, it's not a huge time commitment. It's not a huge sacrifice, but we don't. We don't go to the Father's house to honor Him, to pay Him homage, to worship Him. We don't do that anymore. Why? Second reason I believe this is an evil generation is we don't follow God's commandments anymore. We don't try to follow God's commandments anymore. In, in many ways, we don't even acknowledge God's commandments anymore. You know, we treat the Ten Commandments like the Ten Suggestions. The third reason I think this is an evil generation is that I, I'll point to John the Baptist. John the Baptist was killed. He got his head chopped off because he speaked out against Herod's unlawful marriage. That's why John the Baptist was killed. That's what got him into trouble. He spoke out against an unlawful marriage. And we're living in a time when we've rejected the biblical view, God's view of marriage and sexuality. We've rejected the biblical view of sexuality in our time. If you stand up and say, hey, I don't buy into all of this stuff. You will be persecuted, condemned. You'll lose your job. You'll be canceled, whatever. This is a wicked generation. This is an evil generation. Now, people will say, oh, you got to let go of your archaic belief system. Like, you know, we're in the whatever, the 21st century. Stop being such a superstitious, uneducated peasant. Give up your Catholic things. Listen, the Lord Jesus, he said... The queen of the south, she'll rise up. And one day the people of Nineveh, they'll rise up. We're living in a time of great signs and wonders. The Lord is giving us signs to believe. How many of you have heard of Blessed Alexandrina da Costa, the mystic from Portugal? She died in 1955. She was beatified by John Paul II. She lived 13 years on the Holy Eucharist. No food, no water, 13 years. This was medically verified by the skeptics, by doctors. She's a sign to this unbelieving generation who does not believe in the Holy Eucharist. Catholics, so many, they don't believe that Jesus is truly present in the Holy Eucharist. Despite the Lord giving us signs, how many of you have heard of Saint Padre Pio? Yeah, you want to talk about a sign? This great saint with his stigmata, the great miracles around Saint Padre Pio. This is a sign to an unbelieving generation. God is real. God loves us. Jesus really did suffer for us. His hands and side and feet were pierced for us. He died out of love for us on the cross. The Lord desperately wants us to believe. He sends us signs. And, and I could stand here all day and, and just continue to, to speak about the Lord's desperate pleading for us. And again, these saints, St. Padre Pio, St. Mother Teresa, the children of Fatima, Blessed Alexandrina, they'll stand up and they'll say, you should have known, you should have seen the signs. People who reject God today, people who buy into the atheism and the agnosticism and the ways of the world, who dismiss Catholics as a bunch of superstitious, uneducated peasants, do you think, you think you're going to get to heaven? 
Do you think they're on their way to heaven by living a godless life? I'm going to tell you something. I don't know about you. I want to get to heaven. Oh, I do. I want to spend eternity in the Father's house where there's no tears and no pain. That's my longing. That's my goal. That's what we were made for. We have an immortal soul that will live on forever. And if we accept the Lord Jesus and try to follow him, he will raise us up on the last day. And we will enter into our Father's house forever. This is what I want. But what did the Lord Jesus say? Whoever is ashamed of me and of my words, my Father will be ashamed of him when, he comes before the, when I come before my Father and in, 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 in the holy angels. Do you think this unbelieving generation who's bought into the atheism and the agnosticism and the ways of the world, do you think they're on their way to heaven? I don't think they are. And I'm not afraid to say it. In our politically correct world, we think everyone's going to heaven. Do whatever you want. Try to be a nice person. Everyone's going to heaven. Where does it say that in the Bible? What great saints of the church proclaim that, oh, everyone's going to heaven. You don't need to, to, to strive to, to be holy. That's never been said in the last 2,000 years. So why does everyone believe this today? Why do we no longer preach repentance? Believe the good news that God so loved the world that He gave His only Son so that you can have eternal life. Why do we not preach this anymore? You wonder why our young people don't go to church? Who's rising up to warn them? Save yourself from this corrupt generation. And so we need to pray that the Lord raise up His prophets and His saints in our time to proclaim the good news to everyone so that people can be saved.